Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Giving honor and praise unto the Most High, the Creator and Maker of heaven and earth. My name is Yeshaya Yisrael of the tribe of Don of the nation of Israel. This particular presentation, we do not intend for it to be long, but we do intend, brothers and sisters, to bring this knowledge to our people. The knowledge of this in the history of the Israelites, called in this particular case, from Jerusalem to the hood, part five. Now we've gone over part one, two, three, and four. And then the last time we spoke upon the matter, brothers and sisters, of the Israelites and the Greeks. Before that, we spoke about the Israelites and the Medes and the Persians. Before that, we spoke about the Israelites and the Babylonians. Before that, we spoke about the Israelites and the Assyrians. Before that, it was an intro. What we're going to go into now, brothers and sisters, with the time allotted, and giving honor to the Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth. We're going to be talking about the Israelites and the Romans. We ask you all to get your pens, your pads, your paper, and to take notes. Again, we ask you all to get your pens, your pads, your paper, and to take notes. As is the custom on this, brothers and sisters, we are going to shut down the camera, brothers and sisters, in that manner. And if I can be heard and the people are in good spirits, please type in the number four. If I can be heard and people are in good spirits, please type in the number four. Shalom, Yirmiyahu Yisrael. Shalom, Valerie Kalami. Sorry if I mispronounced the name. Shalom, Mora Batsheba. Shalom, Brendan Williams. So what we're going to do now is do present, share screen, if we will. I apologize for the tardiness in this particular matter due to the fact of there being an audio matter in this case. Again, I'm open to constructive criticism on how brothers and sisters to even make this better. So we hope everybody is well and we hope everybody will be better. We ask you all to subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share. I can be reached brothers and sisters at the number. I'm going to type it inside of here. 908-587-4841. All right. And brothers and sisters, I can be reached at text and I can be reached at WhatsApp in this particular case. For those who do care to donate, the cash app is dollar sign Frank Sun One. So, in that particular matter. All righty. So, let us, brothers and sisters, get into this. We're going to pull up the PowerPoint slide. We do not profess at Day Night Publications to know everything. Yet, brothers and sisters, we hope and pray that people are well and will be better. I ask you all to keep, if you pray to Yah only, myself and the lady in my life in your prayers. For those who do know, the sister that I'm with, whom I'm courting with, had a planned surgery and is in recovery. So a lot of things have gotten better and feeling better. And we thank you all for the people who have reached out to her and so forth and so on. Brothers and sisters, what are we looking at here? Found in Hazor, the inscription says, belonging to Mach Biram. This is dated to the 8th century BCE. The 8th century, correct me if I'm wrong, BCE means 900 and something BCE. And we see Hebrew writing already there. One of the claims that's made against Israelites is that the oldest Hebrew writing dates to the 10th century. 
But brothers and sisters, or 10th century BCE, but one of the things, brothers and sisters, we care to point out is that even if that's the case, which I doubt, um, people speak before they write. And there are even languages to this day in which people don't even write in, but yet people speak. There are certain alphabets or phonetics that are borrowed one from another. So these are things, brothers and sisters, that we want to point out for reference purposes. Hazor was a place in ancient Israel in the tribe of Naphtali. Solomon, king of Israel, fortified it. Eventually, the city was taken over by the Assyrians. We've gone over the Assyrians, <coughs> excuse me, family, in this particular presentation and on others. So, brothers and sisters, Again, I can be reached by text or WhatsApp at 908-587-4841. All right, I am open to constructive criticism. Let's continue in this, brothers and sisters. Social condition of the Hebrews. From the timing of when the tribes on the northern kingdom and east side of the Jordan were being taken captive, we see Israel being out of the land in droves. The pestilence cleaved to Israel, Deuteronomy 28. The mighty waters have taken over, Psalm 79. They of north and top penheads feed on the crown of Israel, Jeremiah 2. And Israel left the beautiful land desolate, Zechariah 3. With no prophet to speak to the people, they were left to wit's end and had to rely on each other. But due to internal squabbling, the Israelites were easily taken over by the Greeks and Romans. So, brothers and sisters, that is an intro into this particular subject that we're getting to for reference purposes. Now, why do I, brothers and sisters, intend on taking down the camera? It's for two reasons. One, I'd rather the people look at the presentation, the PowerPoint, and see that. Secondly, brothers and sisters, when people know who they're subscribed to, when people already been following, and I don't say that as anyone being caught a follower, brothers and sisters, then people already know then whom they're listening to. So I leave it on for maybe two minutes to say shalom and everything of that sort to make sure I'm heard. But um, at the end of the day, it is not imperative. And you'll find this even on some online classes in college that you must see, quote, who when it's speaking to and vice versa. So I play that by ear in that particular case. All right. So this is something that we want to point out for reference purposes. Again, if I can be heard and if people are in good spirits, please type in the number four. All right. So let's look at this. The social conditions of the Hebrews due to the fact of the internal matters. It allowed the Greeks and then later on the Romans to come into it. We already gone over in history that the Greeks lost to the Romans, brothers and sisters, in the second century BCE. During the same era, in the same time frame, when I say ERA or era, is when the people of Carthage lost, brothers and sisters, to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, when we get into this particular matter, you will find out as we've gone over that the people of Carthage were a mixture between the Canaanites who were Hermetic and the people of Asher who were of the Israelites and Zebulun who were of the Israelites. So we've gone over the matter and it's actually more so documented, not to play salesman, inside the book called Israelite History as it relates to the world. I ask you all to stay to the end of this presentation because we're going to talk about a book matter and so forth and so on. So let us continue in this particular case. If I can be heard, and if people are in good spirits, please type in the number four. If I can be heard and people are in good spirits, please type in the number four. Thank you, brothers and sisters. The Israelites were being displaced by others. These others were Edomites, Greeks, Romans, Nabatean, and others. Now, who knows who the Nabataeans were? If I may ask, centuries before that time of Greek hegemony, the prophet Isaiah stated, strangers devour your land in your presence. Your cities are burned with fire. 
So, brothers and sisters, in the last presentation of this, we've gone over the fact that the place of the Sumerians, which were in part Israel, like Stephen still in the days of the Greek era, that Alexander burnt the city. We've gone over that in this particular case. So when we go into what has happened with the Israelites in their land and, the, and being brothers and sisters displaced from their land, we can see what we're talking about for reference purposes. Thank you, brother Yermiyahu Yisrael, for that. The Nabataeans, as asked, would be, in part, the Ishmaelites from Ishmael's son, Nebaiot. All right? Let's go on to the next slide, brothers and sisters. Citations. According to the Roman historian, Pompeius Trogus, we see... Antiochus Sadites also conquered the Jews. Xerxes, king of the Persians, was the first who conquered the Jews. They then passed with the Persians themselves under the dominion of Alexander the Great and for a long time remained subject to the Macedonian Empire as subjects to the kingdom of Syria. Now, what do we mean when we speak upon that particular matter with the kingdom of Syria? You have to remember, after Alexander died, the main two the um, successes of Alexander that were important to the Israelites were the Ptolemies and the Seleucids, which we going over last time. The Seleucids, brothers and sisters, were the people who ruled in Syria, where the Arameans of the ancient world were. The Ptolemies were the people who ruled in Egypt, and we won over when they had the wars and who won what war and the timing of such for those who are interested, all right? They sought to, again, the friendship of the Romans and obtained from them their liberty. What are we pointing out? Being oppressed by the people of the Seleucids and having problems with the Ptolemies, the Israelites, believe it or not, under the leadership of Julius, pardon me, of Judas Maccabeus or Yehuda HaMaccabi made in league with the Romans, which we come to find out later wasn't the best idea, but it was the best idea that he saw at that time. So at the same token, we don't want to present things and condemn the people for what they were unable to see to happen as we look in centuries later at hindsight. All right. Pompey was the first Roman to subdue the Jews and set foot in the temple by right of conquest. This is a source of information that the temple contained no images of any god. Their shrine was empty. The innermost sanctuary void. The walls of Jerusalem were destroyed, but the temple was left standing. The walls of Jerusalem were destroyed. Do you remember when we start talking in the past about the high and fortified walls in which you trust come down? That began to happen in part with the Assyrians. Centuries before the time of the Israelites and the Romans meeting, why do I point that out? For two reasons. Some people attempt to go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 52, and by doing so, misunderstanding the history of the Israelites, saying that from Deuteronomy 28, verse 48, to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, is only the Israelites and the Romans, but such is not the case. If anything, you read specifically about the Romans in Daniel chapter 11, which would be for another time and presentation. But brothers and sisters, the mighty and high walls that the Israelites used in their architecture was the style that the Israelites had. So when it says the flood have come upon the people in Psalm 79, it is talking, brothers and sisters, about the nations. Blessed be the Most High who has not made us to pray to their teeth. That's in Psalm 79. So when you read what happened later on in Israel with the lions, one representing Assyria, one representing Babylon, in Jeremiah chapter 50, where it says that first the king of Assyria and last is Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, broken the bones of Israel. So symbolically, these nations are represented by floods and by animals that have attacked the house of Israel. 
So we want to go over this history. And brothers and sisters, the Assyrian record that you see in the British Museum, the Babylonian record that you see inside of museums, confirm what the Bible, what the scriptures is talking about. So what nation makes up a story about being defeated? Who's going to want to make up a story that the future daughters of the nation will read about her ancestors on the male side being defeated by another man? Who's going to want to make up that kind of situation? Nobody, brothers and sisters. And we've gone over, as pointed out on my Facebook page, you understand, about the history of the Israelites and the evidence of them being oppressed by the Egyptians. So getting back into this right here, we're looking at what? Pompey was the first Roman to subdue the Jews and set foot in the temple by right of conquest. This is the same Pompey who eventually had beef or war or drama, you may say, with Julius Caesar. And then he wound up going into Egypt and was assassinated, correct me if I'm wrong, by Ptolemy the 13th. So brothers and sisters, this is documented in history by Tacitus, who was a Roman historian. He spoke of the Israelites, as does the papyri used by the Alexandrian Jews, as well as the Ptolemies, as well as the Marashu records of the Persians as well as the record left about Yaukinu Kaihudu of Jehoiachin of Judah that the Babylonians spoke about, as well as Hosea and before him Pekah that the Assyrians spoke about, as well, brothers and sisters, of Misha, king of Moab, that spoke about the tribe of Gad and the men of Israel. What am I doing in that case? It's showing how different nations outside of the scriptures mention the Israelites. So we know and understand that it is not a myth. All right. So, brothers and sisters, let's continue on in this particular case. Notes. The Israelites were not easy to control due to their monotheism and a fact of images of the Romans in their temples were an abhorrent to the Hebrews. So what can we point out? The Israelites shunned the concept of Favon, even Caligula inside of the temple, as we're going to go on in this case. We already know of Caligula for those who studied about the Roman history. To my knowledge, he didn't even make it to the age of 30. We're not going to sit there and spend too much time upon his perversion or the perversion of Nero or other matters of that case because we want to show the history of the Israelites and the Romans as opposed to, say, just the Romans and what they were about. But one thing we do know, brothers and sisters, is that what we're going to get into later on and read in Daniel chapter 7 concerning the Romans, it made Daniel the prophet sick because he couldn't believe what he was looking at. And the American style is copied after the Romans, which is copied after the Greeks. That is why even in colleges, when they go into Western civilization, they have to sit there and highlight the Greeks because the Greeks is the mother of Western civilization. A lot of the words that we speak in English go back to Greco-Roman matters. By the way, the Greeks didn't call themselves Greeks. They called themselves the Hellenes. That's why you get Hellenism. The Romans called those Hellenes Grecos, which we get Greeks from. All right? In the future, we're going to go over a list of the bywords that one nation called the other and the names that the people called themselves. Everything from Hopsetsit, Queen of Egypt, speaking upon the manner of, quote, the barbarians, who didn't call themselves that, all the way right down to when the people in Virginia referred to the black man coming off the slave ship as Ethiopians. So, brothers and sisters, let's get into this particular matter here. All right? Circumcision, too, was a custom the Romans wanted to rid the Hebrews of, both Domitian and Hadrian. So, brothers and sisters, what can we point out in this particular case? Shalom, my lady, Sarah Michaela. How you doing, love? Thank you for joining us. What are we looking at in this particular case, brothers and sisters, where it says that Domitian and Hadrian. Domitian was a Roman emperor. He was the son of Vespasian and the brother of Titus. Hadrian was a Spaniard from Spain that eventually became an emperor of the Roman Empire. Do you know that the ancient Spaniards used to brush their teeth in urine? Did you know 
that during the time of Tiberius, the second Roman emperor, is when the women in Rome begin to sit there and use soap. And before that, the Romans in general begin to use soap in the year 50 AD or CE during the time of Augustus as we're going over before. So what were you washing up in? You see, the Torah talks about wash. Rakhaz is the Hebrew word for that. Wash you, make you clean. Physically and spiritually cleansing. Did you know, and it's not to be disrespectful or nasty because there may be children listening, one of the common STDs in the ancient Greeks and Roman Empire people was what? Herpes. And another one came from a matter of a thing called, correct me if I'm wrong, spegma. Spegma comes from, if I'm mispronouncing it, please let me know. In the phallus of a male, in his genitalia, it happens commonly, sadly, when men who are uncircumcised and the urine stays in and it rots and it forms an STD, which can form into that or a UTI, that's to say a sexually transmitted disease if it's passed on or urinary tract infection. Circumcision eliminates that greatly. So we can see that the culture of the Israelites was heavily about cleansiness, brothers and sisters. So what are we pointing out? In this particular matter, it goes on to say, since the Hebrews were close to their culture, it was not easy for the Romans to hold them under their rule. It was noted that the Hebrews were willing to fight against Caligula than to have participated in his ideas of grandeur. How? And I have three sisters. Do you know that's your sister and you want to be intimate with them? That is beyond sick. You should not lie with thy sister to daughter of thy father or the daughter of thy mother. And all who do so shall be cut off from among their people. The children of Israel were told not to do such customs. One of the arguments made about the world before the Torah was given is that for population matters, people did that. But certainly by the time in many nations, even black ones have done that. You understand? From Chaldea even into Egypt. From Canaan even into other nations, but the children of Israel was given a different law with different rights. Now, when I say rights, I'm going to type this in, if I may, R-I-T-E-S, all right, which means that you had different ceremonies as a people. You understand? So the ways of the Romans and the ways of the Israelites were different, and we pointed that out when you go into the book called Egypt Talking Writing for those who are interested. Let me take out the liberty and time to go over this. This book you can get on Amazon. By the way, stay tuned to the end of this presentation regarding the book sales. All right. Did the Torah come from the coach of Tom Mary? All right. So this book right here you can get on Amazon as we're going over in the past. Now, brothers and sisters, looking upon this. Israel was to be separated and different. You're supposed to look different. Act different, speak different. Balaam stated concerning Israel, a people not reckoned among the nations. Let's go on. Augustus matter in brief. Pompey marched against the inhabitants of Syria, Palestine, who had ravished Phoenicia. They had as leaders two brothers, Hyrcanus and Aristobulus who were competing for the high priesthood. Now, what were we talking about earlier, brothers and sisters here? But due to, it, in the third paragraph on the left-hand side, but due to internal squabbling, the Israelites were easily taken over by the Greeks and Romans. Due to problems in the relationship between a man and a woman, you know that's how a hater can come in? Due to problems between a woman and a man, do you know that's how an, a hater could come in? Sisters and brothers, but I'm going to first say sisters, any man in your inbox or in your text or in your face that says that whenever you and your man have a problem, confide in him, that's evil. When you read in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus chapter 9, I believe it at, or chapter 8, it says basically in so many words, when a woman is going through something that's not the happiest with her ish or with a man or her significant other, 
Don't sit there and confide to another man. That's not smart. Brothers, if you're going through something that's not the happiest with your lady, don't confide to another woman. That's not the happiest. Certain things, like Solomon said, a home is a place where you cover shame. So now what happened with the Israelites, getting back to this, with Aristobulus and his brother Halcanus, with the squabbling, I want this and I want that power. The Romans is like, we got our mark. The people are not getting along. Let's now infiltrate. That's what happened with Cortel Pro, for those who do know about that. They had to make sure that there was a squabbling in the matter. I go so far, and I'm not saying I was the biggest fan of everything they said. Nobody is perfect. That's what happened between the rappers, Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur. Between Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace, also known as Biggie Smalls, who both passed away before the year 2000, they made them look at each other through an evil eye. And then, not to get sidetracked, once they passed away, Easy e in 1995, Tupac in 1996, Biggie Smalls in 1997, and then, correct me if I'm wrong, you had the rapper Freaky Ty and Big L who passed away in 1999. So all of these rappers made a rest in peace. And then let's not talk about the one since 2020 who passed. We begin to see a change in rap. You have people saying the best rapper is Eminem, and this is not to be racial. No, he's not. For those who really know what that history was about. You have the rap awards being starred by the Beastie Boys. How is that possible when Run DMC was before them? Because taking in a matter of people not getting along one with another, the nation see it and boom, they hit their mark. That's what happened with the Panthers. That's what happened, and I'm not Muslim, with the NOI or the FOI. That's what happens between a man and his woman. That's what happens between anyone. Anytime someone is happy that you're not getting along with somebody else, watch that person, because that's not a good friend. All right? The Israelites wrote letters to Augustus in hope that they who were scattered from Libya to Asia slash Syria will receive favor. Libya is west of Egypt. Let's go on. The tax that was imposed on the subjects of Rome was not put on the Israelites if they did worship the gods of the Greeks. Are we serious? So the Greek gods and the Roman gods Copy the style that the ancient Canaanites had. You know, the God died at a certain season and came back up, dying and resurrecting kind of gods and so forth and so on. That is not the culture of the Israelites. But you won't get taxed if you teach about the gods of these nations. Why do you think, for instance, that the church and Christianity is not taxed? Because you're teaching about the Roman gods. Your teacher's circumcision is that old covenant. You don't have to do that no more. So people were selling out to keep their coins in the pocket. The privilege of exemption for military service granted to Jews by Augustus was temporarily withdrawn from the Jewish community in Rome. Now we do know that it's Israel and Judah. But when you're citing a book as I am here, citing a matter, brothers and sisters, you got to cite it exactly as it's written. That's why sometimes you might see footnotes and so forth. All right, let's go on. So that the Jews with citizenship became liable for legionary service and the rest, most probably the majority for auxiliary service. What happened, and I say this in due love and respect to our family, that's in Demona and this Paramon in the land of Israel. That's been there since the 60s. What happened when they was granted citizenship? They had to go and join the Israeli Jewish European Jew army. 
by them accepting the citizenship, like the Israelites in the time of Augustus getting citizenship, you made yourself object to have to join and fight against others. Israel, let's not make the mistake that happened with Israel in the time of Augustus. Or Israel that made the mistake in the land of Israel of today. Or the Maccabees that made the mistake making a league with Rome. Or the Maroons of Jamaica that made a mistake that made a league, brothers and sisters, with the British. Or the Columbus who were the Maroons of Brazil that made a league with the Portuguese. It never worked out. The league that the Maccabees under Judas Maccabeus had made with the Romans did not turn out in the Israelites' favor. The league that the Moors, pardon me, not the Moors, the Maroons had made with the British in Parliament did not turn out to their favor. The league, brothers and sisters, and the agreement that we see here did not turn out to the Israelites' favor. Our people were, again, not meant to be reckoned among the nations. Let's go on, brothers and sisters. Caligula, to narrow and brief. Caligula ordered them, the Israelites, to put up his statue in the temple. They preferred war to that. As we're going over, and part of it in their answer to Gaius or Caligula is as follows. Thou will, thou will not disobey. Caius's epistle, nor will we transgress the commands of our law. We suffer them not to be transgressed. Elohim, God, will stand on our side when out of regard to him and sustain the uncertain turns of fortune. But if we submit to thee, we will be greatly reproached for our cowardice and we should incur the anger of Elohim or God also, who even thyself being judged is Superior to Caius, or that's to say to Caligula in that case. That comes out of the book of Josephus, what the Israelites were saying back, that if they were to put Caligula's image inside the temple, that the Israelites would be known as being cowards. I don't know everything about 501c3. I heard good, I heard bad about it. But anytime your organization is being paid by X, Y, and Z people. And you can't say certain things because of certain things, then you know exactly what it is. You wrote an excellent book, Nation of Islam, and I say this in no disrespect to you all, called The Secret Relation Between Blacks and Jews. But the leader, Farrakhan, is in cahoots with you-know-who. So when they told him to put his book down, it's no longer to be able to be bought. You understand? When my mother used to listen on the phone when I was a child and said, don't be friends with that person no more, I had to acquiesce and obey what my mother was saying. So you can tell in light of that kind of nature, who controls who? Just like my mother controlled who some of my friends were, so do some of these politicians are controlled because you can speak upon it and see who they cannot go against. I could not go against my mother, nor could some of these leaders go against who is their, quote, daddy, if you get where I'm coming from. You can tell who they cannot speak against. You can tell what they will not say. You can tell who they sit there and say, oh, no, no, we ain't going too far with that one. The Apocrypha says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, honor thy father and mother in both word and deed. If you're honoring them in word and deed, there are certain things that you just won't say on or offline about your mother or father. So just the same, there are certain things. And when the leader of the nation of Islam is saying that the children of Israel in his newspaper were black, and then you're going online saying the children of Israel were white, you're double talking. Somebody's controlling you. Who's paying you? Why can't you just go out and say certain things in that particular case? And this is no bash on any particular organization. Because believe me, Israelites have been paid off too. You can tell by some of the teachings that some come out with. You understand? And so now, getting back into the matter here, if we will, right? Claudius was a successor of Caligula. He, was also, was, he also was his uncle. Claudius made Judea a province to be governed by Roman knights and freedmen. During the era of Claudius, the Israelites were deprived of rights such as having assembly. Having assembly? 
Do you know in America, we're going to go over this as these presentations from Jerusalem to the hood goes on. That it was a law in New York in 1710 that black people could not congregate. You get that from reading a book called Slavery and the Making of America by Horton and Horton. You can look that book up online. So during the era of Claudius, the successor and uncle to Caligula, Israelites were deprived of having assembly. We could bring it back if we want to, no disrespect intended, to this day and time. Back in the 70s, social worker come over, see your man's shoes in there, your rent may have not gotten paid. Get that N-word, get that man out the house. I hate to have to say it, but you saw that movie Claudine, remove the male out the house, no assemblage there. It's different forms in which that has happened in the ancient world and in the modern world. It was to break the unity of the people. When the unity wasn't even being broken themselves, let's try to find other ways in which to do it. You read the Willie Lynch letter, but we want to get back into this history here. He, Claudius, took over Tiberius, Teresia, if I mispronounce it, let me know, and Perea. Perea or Perea, pardon me. Nero sent out Vespasian against the Israelites. Because after Claudius, you had Nero. Nero was despised by the Romans and certainly despised by the Israelites. Sent out Vespasian against the Israelites. So let's go on in this. The Quarus Caesarea, Caesarea, said by some, was over Isopoliteia. Now, what you're seeing right there, that was a treaty of equal citizenship. Some question concerning the civic status of the Jewish, which you know is Israel, community versus that of the Greeks and the equality of their rights. Ain't that what goes on now with gentrification? Who is the citizen and who is not as well? Let's see how it connects and let's bring the history out. If I can be heard, brothers and sisters, if you're in good spirits, please type in the number four. Again, I apologize for the tardiness. We're supposed to start at 9.30. We started at 10 due to an audio matter. Toward the end of Felix's rule, the quarrel erupted into street fighting in which the Jews tended to have the upper hand. <coughs> the local magistrates did their best to keep the peace by arresting and punishing the instigators of such clash, of each clash but their efforts only inflamed the combatants' feelings. And finally, Felix had to send his troops in against the Jews, who rapidly capitulated. But this did not settle the constitutional question on which he has, and on which he was not competent to give a ruling. And when dissension continued, he, being a procurator, in this case by the name of Felix, he himself chose representatives from the two sides to go to Rome and submit the matter to the emperor, just as he had done in the matter of the Alexandrian quarrel. Brothers and sisters, what are we pointing out right here? He sent in today's terminology, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, your Sharpton and your Jesse Jackson. Two people go and just speak to the people to make them calm. Show the image of them so they'll sit there and be at peace. Let a woman be there so all the females will be happy like something was achieved. And let her sit there in one breath, say she's Indian, married to a European man or East Indian. And in another breath, she talks about the stuff she went through being, quote, black. We're talking about Miss Kamala Harris. I'm glad to see that a lot of women today see through that smoke screen. It wasn't like, we made it. No, it's a smoke screen that's presented to the people. Same thing was done with the timing of the Romans. They flip flop brothers and sisters, is not consistent. 
You understand? Let's continue. Oh, by the way, non disrespect intended. A lot of the, or some of the taskmasters in ancient Egypt, when Israel was in captivity, were Israelites. Again, we're the only people who take pride in being against our own. No one else does that. I'm going to take the liberty to sit there and say, may an elder in Israel by the name of Zaquin Yekezko rest in peace. For those who do know, we lost an elder in the house of Israel last week. May the Most High bless his memory. May he rest in peace. He said, if I remember right, the year was 1957. And the black gangs came together against the Italian gangs in East New York and the brothers or the black gangs, if you put it in terms like that, were definitely defending their neighborhood. When the Rodney King verdict came, there was a proposed truce in California between the gangs known as the Bloods and the Crips. And then when the death of Tupac happened some years later, they try to sit there and use that as a way to make the people go against each other again. So what do we want to point out, brothers and sisters, is that our disunity is what the people love. It happened in the time of Augustus, happened in the time we're going to talk about later, and it's happening now. No other nation fears being called loving their own. They try to use the term racist, whatever. You can only translate that in certain languages. But nobody else fears that term but us. We've been called everything else. Why not love one another? You understand? Somebody asked one time, is having, quote, BET or Black Entertainment Television racist or the historic black college and universities. Why must it be black? Um, Because the job application has the word black on it and asks me to check it. Because when I come from the Bronx Zoo and I get an email, it asks me my race for going and sit there and look at the Ibex and the Peacock. The Bronx Zoo is asking me in a questionnaire, what race are you if you care to answer? Does it matter? Please don't tell me it doesn't matter. When I'm 43 and we're still seeing Black First in 2023, we still seeing Black First? First one Black person to do in 2023? You mean my parents passed away, my father when I was 14, my mother when I was 24, may they both rest in peace, and there's certain Black First that they did not see, being both born in the 1950s. So this is not a racial presentation, but it's talking about how the history did not change because of the situations having not changed. Again, if we love one another, we are unstoppable. If we love one another, we are unstoppable. I think it was Fabulous who made up the song. I'm a... F um. I'm a force by myself, but with two, we're together. Something of that nature for those who know the song. Pardon me for misquoting it. You understand? You can tell when a couple is a team and is what we're supposed to endeavor and want. Now, the dissension confirmed between the Israelites and the Greeks under the Roman Empire, as we're reading of here during the time of Nero, and his Roman procurator by the name of Felix and what happened. So he picks two people who of the Israelites to go to the emperor. Yeah, go ahead and speak. Yeah, 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 go, yeah, go ahead. Let's go on, family. Notes on Vespasian. Vespasian is the successor eventually of Nero because Nero had a successor named Vatilins and then there was also Galba and there was also Oso. But the main one we're going to get into in this particular case brothers and sisters, is Vespasian. During the early phases, the edges of the conflict 
were blurred by internal dissension, which diverted Jewish, which we know as Israel, energy into civil war first between a moderate peace party and the insurgents and later between the rival factions of insurgents. Not almost until the end did the Jews present a united front. So what happened? And we want to even bring it down from the timing of Vespasian, the internal issue, the problem and the argument between even, say, a brother and a sister could sit there and have somebody else's hot on in that. Between a man and his woman will sit there and be like, some women are catty like that. Some men are wicked like that. SWV. Remember them sisters with voices not to knock them. What your girl don't know won't hurt her. Kind of sit there and matter. If y'all having a problem, just call me. That kind of thing. And that's what the nation's here is sitting up there dealing with. Remember the movie Crash, if I'm not misquote, misquoting it, where the man sees his wife being accosted and disrespected by the police. He can't do nothing out of fear of being attacked or shot. So he's made to look like he can't defend his lady. And then the same person who will disrespect it and accosted the, the married woman it's going to be the same one while her husband is not there, mind you, again, to help her. Um, he delivers herself from the fire. So not only was your man in that movie Crash not able to help you the first time when I disrespected you, I being a person in that movie, I'm going to be the one who sit there and helps you. So your man couldn't help you neither time. Who are we seeing in that particular case? Who comes up with a concept in a movie like that? If not the descendants of the Romans. If not the people who hope that you don't get along one with another. You understand? Now, during the early phases, the edges of the conflict were blurred by internal dissension. People not getting along with another is how the problems came about. It even flips. It don't matter who the nation is because when the white man who were British and the white man who was Spaniard was fighting in Jamaica, that's when the Maroons took to the mountains of Trelawney and they winded up fighting against their oppressors. So it don't matter who the people are, when people are not united, that's how anybody else can sit there and have the upper hand, say, in such manner. So, again, unity is where our strength is. And though we know unity is, it has to be built upon righteousness because hand joined to hand, Said Solomon, my hand upon it, the wicked should not go unpunished. So while we're talking about unity, we want it cloaked over with righteousness, brothers and sisters. They will be unstoppable. Remember Hosea chapter 4, verse 8. They eat at the sin of my people. They actually take time out to sit there and note a thing called, quote, black on black crime. Black people don't get along. Black people don't support each other. And this is how they get higher up. And we come down, like Deuteronomy 28 says, you come down lower and lower. See, Israel can either be the top, the head, or the tail. There is no in-between. So let's look at this, brothers and sisters. It says, the moderate peace party and the insurgents, and later between the rival fractions of insurgents. Rome saw that there was a problem and said they're going to jump inside and we see who's in the land now. Why do you think the Europeans who are in the land of Israel, as vindictive as some people can be, not to try to be quote-unquote anti, you know, the S word, um, why you never go to the Vatican? Why you never dig under the Temple Mound? You the people. Why is the main center of Jerusalem shown near a mosque when Mecca was to be, if anything, the, quote, city of holiness in Islam? Because at first, the holy city of Islam was Jerusalem. But when the people in Yathrib and other places did not believe what Muhammad was saying, he turned from Jerusalem as the holy city to Mecca. But that's a whole other subject, which we'll get into as these presentations go on. But with the time allotted here, let's look back at this right here, brothers and sisters. The Israelites used boiling oil on the Romans' cavalry called Testudo. 
The Israelites when caught preferred suicide than enslavement. Remember that song our people used to sing? Before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. What do you think that's talking about? The Israelites defeated the Romans army so bad that Vespasian sent out legions 5, 10, and 15 against the Israelites. He also sent out legion 12 for those who know that history. The Israelites were led by one named John Eleazar. He was of the Zealots. Brothers and sisters, what you're seeing there is a coin on the right-hand side about Judah being taken as captive or Judea being captive. You know why the people in the land of Israel today don't sit there and try to, we're going to get the Romans back for what they did to our ancestors because y'all are the descendants of the Romans. We'll get into that as time goes on. Next slide. The abomination that maketh desolation fell upon Jerusalem. And for the next three years, Roman troops were engaged in stamping out the last sparks of the great rebellion. Some, but not by means all, of the Jewish, which we know as Israel, population, were scattered over the face of the earth. The destruction of Jerusalem contributed only a little to the great dispersion of the Jewish, which we know as Israelite nation, which was already well under way long before 70, meaning 70 AD. But Judea did henceforth cease to be a specifically Jewish state, Israelite state, we know, not so much because it jurisdictional status was changed, but because the Sanhedrin and high priesthood were abolished and the worship at the temple in Jerusalem was forbidden. Let's go back here to make a point. The Israelites were not easy to control due to their monotheism and effect of the image of the Romans in their temples was an abhorrent, said the Hebrews. Due to the fact of the Israelites being interwoven in their culture, It was the difficulty for the Romans to enter. But when the Israelites not got along, then you see Rome able to enter because it shows you part of the culture is to love your neighbor as yourself. You understand? In the book from Babylon to Timbuktu, we see in the year 65 BCE, the Roman armies under Pompey captured Jerusalem in 70 AD. General Vespasian and his son Titus put it into the Jewish state, which we know as Israel, with great slaughter. During this period, from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over 1 million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish, which we know as Israel, slaves. In the book Hebrewisms of West Africa, we see the following. John Olgerby, master of of His Majesty's Revels in the Kingdom of Ireland, published in 1679 a volume on Africa, wherein he speaks of the coast of Guinea, which is West Africa, as follows. Many Jews are also scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both sides of the ridge of Niger. Others are Asian strangers who fled thither or there, either from the destruction of Jerusalem by Vespasian, Czech, or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Serrations, and Christians, or else, such as came out of Europe, which they were banished. Remember, as we've hinted on and must go over as these presentations go on, right? That from Ptolemy, Israelites that were in Egypt were later on under the era of Titus, shipped into Italy, and Titus died before 100 AD. So by the time you see about the proselytizing of other peoples into the Hebrew way of life, brothers and sisters, we see why it says there at the end where such was banished. This goes on to say, we want to point this out, if we will, with the laser pointer. Thank you all for the time understanding what the hour is many jews are also scattered over this region in guinea some natives boasting themselves of abraham's seed others are asian strangers who fled thither or there either from the desolation of jerusalem by vespasian so when we talk about vespasian right here in the coin that he made in that case 
and he was the successor of Nero. We already went over that particular matter. We want to point out from Babylon and Timbuktu, Hebrewisms of West Africa, these are where we're getting our sources from. Let's go on and conclude. From Rome to Jerusalem. See, this is Rome, Italy, what they call a Buddha, whatever like that, then Greece. So from Rome, you have to go all the way over there to get to Jerusalem. It would be wiser for the Israelites to go from their land, Israel, to places they were familiar with and for safety reasons. As we've gone over on the channel before, right? I lived in Charlotte, brothers and sisters. I lived in North Carolina. I worked in North Carolina. I have family in North Carolina. So if I would have moved to any state in the South, Coming out of New York, and it's not because of New York, it would be North Carolina. Using myself as that example. If the Israelites were used to going to African places, by default, they didn't go to European places where they were not used to. They've been going over to African places since the timing of Solomon. That's why when we point this out here, when it said the destruction of Jerusalem contributed only a little to the dispersion of the Jewish nation, which we know is Israelite nation, right? Israel was already scattering out. The dispersion or the diaspora had already started to a great extent with Solomon. And according to Eldad the Danite, it be continued when Jeroboam and Rehoboam, the kings of the northern and southern kingdom, had issues that were negative. According to Eldad the Danite, the son of Makli, mentioned in Babylon and Timbuktu, in the 9th century AD, stated that Dan, Gad, Simeon, and other tribes migrated to African places. Let's go on, brothers and sisters. It would be unwise for the Israelites to go from their land if they were losing a war to go in the opposite direction of their foe. Why will they run up into Europe if the enemy that was defeating them and we know why the Israelites were being defeated, came from Europe. Mexico ended slavery, correct me if I'm wrong, in 1837. Do you know there were black people that were enslaved in places like Texas and other places like that, that during the Civil War ran into Mexico? Whereas we continue in these presentations, we're going to get into this kind of subject matter. We ask you all to comment, like, subscribe to the channel, share it, brothers and sisters. And I am open to constructive criticism, brothers and sisters. Let that be noted for edification purposes. The Israelites have been, for some time, been retreating to places in Africa, as pointed out in Isaiah chapter 11. Limitations chapter 2, verse 5. We're going to read that, brothers and sisters, and here's what it says. In Lamentations 2, verse 5, with the time allotted, we read this. Yah has been, Yah was as an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds and have increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. Mourning and lamentation among the daughters of Judah. He has swallowed up Israel. So we can't say the northern southern kingdom didn't go through it because Jeremiah even talks about that. Judah and Israel were oppressed together in Jeremiah chapter 50. But now let's look at this. Here we see Rome there. Going against Jerusalem. And we already read these portions in there. Let's go on. Then we see from Jerusalem to West Africa. So let's look. Rome to Jerusalem. The army from Pompeii all the way on down to Hadrian, right? Including that of Titus. Then we see from Jerusalem to West Africa. So when we go over here in the book, Keeper Wisdoms of West Africa, he's citing John Oldsby in the 17th century A.D., Wrote a volume on Africa. Many Jews are also scattered over this region in Guinea. Guinea is in Western Africa. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both sides of the river Niger. Why do you think it was a crime for us to read? Why do you think in slavery it was a crime for us to read and write? 
You saw the movie Roots, the original one, right? <clears throat> a slave is ignorant. He eats, he sleeps, and he sleeps, and he eats, sleeps, and he's merry, he's happy. <clears throat> but if we give them, the slave, the ability to read, then he becomes most miserable. No, 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 no. The guy who played the professor in Gilligan's Island is the same guy that I'm citing from the movie Roots in the 1970s. Brothers and sisters, no knock on him, say, as an individual, just citing it. There was a reason why we were made and were encouraged to not read. The Roman Empire called an indescribable beast in Daniel 7 verse 7, came to power and defeated the Israelites. From the time of Pompeii in the first century BCE to the time of Domitian in the second century AD, the Israelites were under oppression. Since the time of the Greeks, the Israelites went for secure or security where they can find peace. In Africa, the first Jewish graveyards to be noted are those of Carthage, in which Jewish catacombs are recognized. Do you know it's been said, I remember hearing it when I was a child, that if we knew our history, we wouldn't act as the way we do, if we knew where we came from and so forth and so on. Let's take black studies out of colleges. So you went from, like they used to say, from picking it to being made to smoke it regarding tobacco. And then you went from um, not wanting your own and supporting your own colleges, certain cases, to now when I get to go to, quote, Ivy League. And they are saying to snatch the black history out of it. We don't want that, brothers and sisters. This is why, not to be haughty, a brother wants to write books and thank the most high for being able to ability to write books. I cited Rudolf Winsor. He's over 80 years old. Call him Mikael. He's over 60 years old. You have these other authors in Israel that are up in age and made a most high continue to bless their life. But what are we going to do? Are we going to drop the ball in the baton? Are we going to not continue the work that the pioneers who are authors in Israel set the record? Moses Farrar, Rudolf Winsor, Kohen Mikael. Where are these other authors at to get their information out to the people? Let's not drop the ball. Get your book out. So let's look at this, brothers and sisters, and continue on. The Romans and the Hebrews in Tunisia. Pompey was the first Roman to set foot in the Israelite temple. Julius Caesar gave Israelite lands away to the Edomites. You read that in Josephus. Augustus made the Israelites in Alexandria, Egypt, pay taxes. Tiberius took advice from Sargenus to destroy the Israelites. Caligula wanted his image in the temple. His hope did not happen. Claudius defeated Britain and was friends with the Edomites, such as the Agrippas and all of them who were related to Herod. Nero slew as many Israelites as he could. Vespasian, or Vespasian by pronunciation, sent by Rome, he attacked the Israelites and the Gentiles in the land of Israel. Titus attempted to rid the world of the seed of David. We want to point that out. If I can be heard and people in good spirits, please type in the number four. If I can be heard and people in good spirits, please type in the number four. I know it's a work night for some. I know it's a school night for some. I know it's a work and school night for some. And it's already past 11 p.m. We're not going to rush this, but we wanted to complete this particular segment of this presentation. If I can be heard and people in good spirits, please type in the number four. Let's look at this. Titus attempted to rid the world of the seed of David. Where will he get that idea from? This particular sea line of David, you go to a book called History of Ancient Israel. It states in there that any one of the seed of David that was found was hunted and eliminated. In Israel, we were known as time went on as having our priests and our kingship. We went over earlier, brothers and sisters, on this channel about Oluda Equiano, when you spoke about the chiefs and the patriarchs and so forth and so on. Get rid of their kingdom, get rid of their spiritual connection, get rid of the priesthood who on a human level were the intercessors for the Israelites. 
when they will approach the Most High. Get rid of the Levitical order. That book is the Old Testament that Ezekiel is in. See, there's a reason why these things were called as they were called. Get rid of the seed of David. The Midian made circumcision illegal for the Israelites. Trojan suppressed the uprising in a Kittos battle. This is, brothers and sisters, the 115-117 AD era, ERA. Hadrian suppressed the uprising in the Bar Kokhba battle. That's the 132 to 135 AD matter. So we want to point this out from Pompeii all the way down to Hadrian and some of the things that they was about concerning the Israelites. Let's go on, brothers and sisters. The matter in part with Titus. You familiar with that picture, right? That's what they call the art of Titus. That was set up by Domitian, the brother and successor of Titus in honor of such. And on the right-hand side is the logo that I have for the website, Danite Publications. So let's look and see. They have brothers and sisters here. We want to circle this with the pen, if we will, right? The menorah. And brothers and sisters here, they got the horns. This is in Rome to this day still shown. Where are those objects of today? Vatican, some people have stated. Why was it important for them to take the articles of the Israelites? And what's the difference between that and when they take the articles of the Igbo or the Hausa or the Ashanti or the Asate people and they sit there and bring it to their museums? You've been stealing from the Asiatics, the children of Israel, and even maybe some Asiatics that scattered into Africa and Hamites as well for centuries, O Europeans. You've been plundering for a very long time. You didn't like the people, but you want what they can get for you. Sound familiar? You don't like them, but you need their stuff. Let's go on, brothers and sisters. Notes on the subject in a closing remark. According to Josephus, Titus made the Israelites to be attacked by beasts. While Titus was at Caesarea, he solemnized his birthday. He solemnized the birthday of his brother, pardon, Domitian, after a splendid manner and inflicted a great deal of punishment intended for the Jews, which are the Israelites, in honor of him. For the number of those slain and fighting with the beasts and were burnt and fought with one another exceeded 2,500. So burning Israelites, having Israelites fight each other like the slave masters in Venezuela used to do when they used to sit there and have black men in slavery bump their heads against each other in battle, or what you saw in the movie Django, which two instances with the wrestler one killing the other, or the matter when a man was being attacked by the beast of dogs. It says what here? For the number of those slain and fighting with the beast and were burned were and who fought with one another, burned, fighting, and attacked by beasts. Do you know that they used to sit there and hang black people in the south and burn them up and put it around as a postcard and send it? I have a book called Without Sanctuary that you can get online that talks about that. These people are the same people who congratulated the guy for strangling somebody on the train. And now that guy has over a million dollars in his defense. These are the people who sat there and congratulated Dylan Roof on what he did in South Carolina and assassinating or murdering non-innocent people. That is their entertainment, brothers and sisters. They put postcards about it. They memorialize that particular matter, if you will. These are the people who just released this week the guy Justin Volpe, for those who do know, sodomized 
a guy named Abner Lewima back in New York in the 1990s by putting a plunger inside of his anus. And it ruptured his intestines. So what were these former Italians, what were these former Romans doing to the Israelites? Burning them, sodomizing them, having Israel sadly fighting with each other for the entertainment of others. We spoke upon Vlad and Tyrese and the rapper or singer, sorry, Tyrese, stated that guy Vlad on Vlad TV is using black people to go and get each other for his ratings. We have to stop being like what Isaiah 51 says, lay down on the ground that we may walk over Judah. Lay down on the ground that we may walk over Dan. Lay down on the ground that we may walk over Reuben. Lay down on the ground that we may walk over Benjamin. We got to stop being a doormat. So this Fronto slew all those that had been seditious and robbers who were impeached one by another. But of the young men, he chose out of the tallest and most beautiful and reserved them for the triumph. And as for the rest of the multitude that were above 17 years old, he put them in bonds and sent them to the Egyptian mines. Titus also sent a great number into the provinces as a present to them that they might be destroyed upon their theaters by the sword and by the wild beasts. But those that were under 17 years of age were sold for slaves. So what are you talking about doing this here? 17 and older. Ain't that what they say now? Once you're 18, you're grown and get out your house and just go to work and be for the society. See how it connects? Because these are the same people that we're dealing with and they know who they're dealing with. You understand? Let's look at this. Fronto was a person that was working for Titus in history, right? And he, Titus is the Roman emperor as time went on. Not in this time frame, but later on, he became the emperor. Vespasian was still the emperor when this was going on here. Now, during the days wherein Fronto was distinguishing these men, their perished for want of food, 11,000. Some of them did not taste any food through the hatred of their gods bore to them, and others would not take in any when it was given them. The multitude also was so very great that they were in want even of corn for their sustenance. Brothers and sisters, Ice T pointed out, correct me if I'm wrong, that it costs to keep somebody in prison for two years, the same amount it costs for somebody to go to a college for four years. The rapper Jadakiss asked this, why did they stop letting brothers get degrees in jail? Why? Why, brothers and sisters, keep the people in much ignorance as possible? What is the point in that case? Who is benefiting by one's ignorance? So, brothers and sisters, in closing out this particular case, Titus sent also to the Egyptian mines and great number two to the provinces. One thing to point out real quick, when people attempt to state that Titus sent Israelites to Egypt in ships, no, he did not. The Israelites that were sent in ships by Titus went from Egypt to Europe for the triumph to Italy and had them paraded around. You saw that movie Mandingo, right? Did they not have the men paraded around to be sold as slaves? See, as we're pointing out, these are the same people. This is not to spread quote unquote hatred or anger or anything of that sort. It's to bring out points for reference purposes. The most high will bring every work into judgment. And as we're going to go on in these presentations, brothers and sisters, one of the presidents said he fears for his country when he reflects that God is just. 
Let's go on, brothers and sisters. Check the description. Now, this is the closing remark that I was talking about. Tune in this coming, quote, Monday, the 19th, for a lesson on the memorialization of 12 presidents in their role and ownership. We ask you all to subscribe to the channel, to comment, like, and share. We also ask you all to patronize the books that are written by myself, my lady Sarai, and us. We can be reached at 908 587 4841 or 718 864 3125. Happy Post Memorial Day. Let us go over 12 presidents who are honored. History, not for the Nova series. It's a different series than the one called From Jerusalem to the Hood. Channels being Mori Yeshaya History Lessons, Mori Yeshaya History Lessons 2. So this presentation coming up this Monday, Elohim God willing, is not going to be on Mori Yeshaya Torah Lessons. Subscribe to the channel, Mori Yeshaya History Lessons. From Washington to Grant, over 100 years of ownership, memorialized. Reach Yeshaya. WhatsApp. 908-587-4841. Care to donate? Cash app. Dollar sign, Frank Sun One. So I'm going to put in and type that information in this particular case. All right. We see here 908-587-4841. You care to donate? You can do so by cash app. And that is dollar sign, Frank Sun, the number one. 2S and Frankson and brothers and sisters, thank you all for those who have bought the books. Subscribe to the channel, comment, like, and share. The intention, brothers and sisters, is to have a presentation to be done this coming so-called Monday on the particular matter and so forth, if we will, for edification purposes. Sorry, I jumped the gun in that manner. I am doing, brothers and sisters, Starting Monday, this so-called Monday, June 19th. Some people refer to it as Juneteenth. I understand some people say we should or should not. I'm not giving credence to another God. Our people are attentive. We want to get this out to the people. The three history books, Egypt Talk and Writing, Deuteronomy 28, History Untold to the Masses, and From Assyria to America, which are normally $30, will be priced down online. And if you want to get it from me. To date, no one because I don't deal with thievery, has paid me and they did not get their book. That has not been the case, brothers and sisters. So we're going to conclude in this particular manner and give an honor and praise unto the Most High, the creator, the maker of heaven and earth. Subscribe to the channel, wherever channel you may be on. We intend, creator willing, to also do a lesson this coming Sabbath, this coming so-called Saturday, and it's not going to be a long one, but it's on the Hebrew words, brothers and sisters, that we went over in Isaiah meticulously to get into to knit the quote unquote nitty gritty of a said matter. All right. So subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. Hopefully everybody is well and will be better. All right. Let us, brothers and sisters, close this out. We want to, brothers and sisters, all right? I would like to show if I can and if I may when I'm saying about the books that I have written, that my lady has written, and that we have written. This is what we want to go over right now in this particular case. All right, going to turn on the camera. Brothers and sisters, this is the book that my lady wrote. Chronicles of a Black Woman's Soul in and out of time. You can get this book in the description to get it online will be inside of the description of this. All right. The link to get it, pardon me, on how to get such. Or you can call the number as was listed, as you see there. This is the book that her and I wrote. Hebrew for Couples, Volume 1. How a Man and Woman Speak to Each Other. That's Volume 1. This is Volume 2. Brothers and Sisters. And this is volume three of such. You can get that. These are the three books that her and I wrote, brothers and sisters. And for those who are interested in such, all right? Hebrew for couples. You can get that online, all right? This is the book that she wrote. You can get this 
online as well or from us, brothers and sisters. The other books, different cover, but same content, From Assyria to America. This book, over 400 pages, we're going over this. All right, normally $30 starting on the 19th, this coming so-called Monday. It will be priced down in a matter of the understanding of Juneteenth when our people's attention span is there to hear our history. Deuteronomy 28, same thing with the matter of the pricing of this book, brothers and sisters, and the same thing with this book here, Egypt Talking Writing. All right, I encourage brothers and sisters to get your publications out, write your books. Get your publications out, write your books, get your information out there. All you need real quick is legally to make sure it's over 26 pages and that is not all pictures. You can use Google images that's called public domain. That's how I was able to put a menorah in my book. You understand? When you have it done through any publishing company, self-published or through any of these other ones like Kindle Direct Publishing, Book Baby, whatever else, so forth to so on, they do check to make sure that it maps up to legality standards. Otherwise, they won't publish it. So that's not something that one will really have to worry about. Now, to brothers and or sisters that pay, I want to drop this real quick, um, that pay child support, any time you get the money from yourselves, it goes directly to child support in that particular case. All right? If your royalties come to you, but you are in arrears of what they call child support, that money will go straight into that particular matter. If, brothers and sisters, your book has been approved, sometimes they want to charge you to have an editor, you can pick your own, and so forth. If you do what I did, all right, and they give you an ISBN number, you have to keep it at that same company. If you drop the book, say from the company that you published with, you have to give them back their ISBN number and buy your own. The average ISBN number is about $200. And you buy your own, you can use it for any publication under any platform that you want to in that particular case. All right. The only thing that they do not, and I even got to give credit to this society for not endorsing in publication, is like the fool. Yeah, just as much as that, keeping it clean to the best of my ability, who wrote a book promoting pedophilia. Amazon said, no, we're not publishing that book. You understand? So, brothers and sisters, I encourage people to get your book out. May he rest in peace. Tukey Williams, who helped start the Crip Gang, he repented and is mentioned in his books. So, why not have your books come out, brothers and sisters? All right. You never know who it can help and it cannot hurt. Brothers and sisters, in closing out, giving a shout out on a human level to my lady, Sarah Michaela, to my brother, Yermiyahu Yisrael, to Mora Batsheba, to Valerie Kalmi, sorry if I mispronounced it, to brothers and sisters, Brendan Williams, and to anyone else who is online now or will be on in the future. Listening, we ask you to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Most I bless you all. Shalom.